Bonjour, Monsieur Harris. Bonjour, Bonjour, bonjour. Ça va? Yeah, excellent. Thank you. How are you? Excellent. Very, very nice. Very good. It's a what nice morning. What are we talking here. about today? I'm sorry? What are we going to be talking about today? Uh, it's not going to be us talking. It's going to be you talking. Oh, right. Excellent. I love that. <laughs> Do I get Yeah, paid? I know you love that. I know you love that <laughs> and you deserve that. So uh, today's topic is a question coming from our friend Hamid Reza Minaipur. He wants to hear more about varnish. Okay. So the question goes like this, as you can see on the screen. He wants to know about failure modes it causes. Yep. He wants to know about symptoms. Then he wants to see what is the most appropriate way to detect this problem, especially in early stage. And of course, as, a, as, a, as every good reliability mind, he wants to know what he can do proactively to avoid the problem. And let me expand it on this because you have six minutes to share all your wisdom. So that's more than enough, right? Yeah, <laughs> I like your smile. And so that's, let me expand that's, it. Just, that's everything, right? <laughs> yeah. So I want to expand it with additional question. I hear this very often. And is it the fact that some industries and some assets are particularly uh, uh, impacted by this? Yes, that's a very good point, actually, because um, you do find to some extent certain territories, certain industry types and certain machine types are more affected. But it's because when you look at the typical causes of the varnish that you see why this kind of happens to a degree. So if we consider thermal decomposition and oxidation of the oil, and we know, of course, oxidation, it's the WAM effect. And I talk about the WAM effect in my training. WAM, W-H-A-M, not the music group, but <laughs> the uh, water, the heat, the air and the metals. And of course, the heat aspect and the thermal decomposition, that is going to be much more prevalent in territories where you've got higher ambient temperatures. Mm -hmm. So Middle East region, uh, we saw a lot of this problem happening, uh, but also where you've got assets like gas turbines, for example, where you've got extreme temperatures, such as the, the bearing housings. Uh, again, you see it more hydraulic systems uh, dependent on the design of the systems. You can get localized hotspots that might be causing some issues. But ultimately, what it boils down to is the oil becoming stressed or even better, think of it as the oil becoming distressed. Now, obviously, <laughs> oil doesn't have emotion. I wish people did treat it as a living thing, but uh, it does get distressed at times. And there are a number of factors that may drive that. And as I mentioned with WAM, water, heat, air, air bubbles in the oil are problematic. Certainly. Now, you may remember, of course, when you had a bicycle pump and you put your finger over the end and you squeeze the pump, how did your finger feel? Hot. Yeah. And just how hot do you think an air bubble would be if you were to squeeze it at 200 bar pressure in a hydraulic system? Well, up to 800 degrees centigrade. Exactly. The ideal gas laws, if we use those, the adiabatic compression taking place is up to 800 degrees centigrade. Now, that can lead to localized hotspots, but mm -hmm. also we term it micro dieseling because like a diesel engine, Mm -hmm. The oil can auto ignite at those temperatures. So we have the stressing effect that's causing issues. There is another factor that comes into play, and that is the type of base stock that we're using. Now, mm -hmm. those that are familiar with the American Petroleum Institute's group rating for oils, for the base oils, you've got your group one solvent refined, you've got your group two and group three, uh, hydrogen processed and hydro cracked and then of course you're getting into your group four polyalpha now when you get into your group twos threes fours you are seeing a much more pure base oil there's a lot less impurity mm -hmm. which leads to several problems it affects the ability of the oil to hold its oxidized molecules often referred to as the varnish holding ability but it also impacts the oil's ability to dissipate energy so we do find that even static issues anti-static uh, issues can come into play 
So you may have heard about users talking about, for example, burn marks on their filter elements. You may yep. hear a crackling sound from the filter element. And that is that discharge taking place. I've even seen a tank on an oil rig where the top of the tank was bowed as a result of an explosion that took place in the tank, mm -hmm. which was seen to have been caused by electrostatic discharge. So that in effect then has an issue. So base oils is one factor, but then of course there are also additives. Uh -huh. So is it, is it uh, correct that I hear very often that sometimes some brands are more affected than other or some correct. oils are seem to be more affected than others yeah and it is true to say that there apart from various regions and various machine types being more associated with the problem even certain brands seem to be more uh, of an issue mm -hmm. which was really down to the formulation the panatype additives now i don't want to sound clever here because i'm just reading it from a screen but panatype Phenyl alpha naphthalene, uh, naphthyl amine, I should say, uh, is actually one of the affected types. Now, most of that is now a level playing field in terms of the brands. So brands are not so much of an issue anymore, really, because, of course, they've understood that problem and it's much more under control. And so what it really comes down to is the end user themselves. So as we said, geographically, in terms of ambient temperature, the type of acid but also the most important thing of course is additive depletion at the end of the day because additive depletion loss of the additive package from the base oil mm -hmm. means that oxidation then starts to take place at a greater rate there isn't the inhibitors and antioxidants that can actually control oxidation so yeah it comes down to the end users and of course that means obviously following best practice to avoid the wham effect the water, the heat, the air, the metals. So we, we simply want to have good, clean systems, free of wear metals, free of solid particle contaminants that cause wear metals, free of air, free of moisture, and kept out of the heat, unnecessary heat. And that I want to stress unnecessary heat because in places like the Middle East, I often see the oil stored outdoors in the middle of summer and we're not talking at the end user necessarily, sometimes at the actual supplier stroke distributor. So some of these oils are being stressed even in storage before they go into the machine. So I think that would safely conclude our root causes. So when we talk about failure modes and causes and the symptoms, I think the next thing would be to probably try to understand what the varnish actually is and therefore how it leads to um, the actual failure modes that it causes.